set up. But this is the very early alpha version of the thermocouple board. And so it has a thermocouple connected going to the Make 5 directly instead of a thermistor. And this connects to the extruder controller over I2C directly. So um, it reads the temperature and the extruder controller pings it for what the temperature actually is. Um, it reads the heated build platform normally through a thermistor, so that's separate. Um, this version uses uh, Arduino Mini Pro um, as the microcontroller and a control of the I2C. It has two I2C connections and this one's for the light kit, which is a separate mod of mine. Um, and underneath the LCD you see the uh, Max 6675 I think it is, which is the same one that Adafruit's using and is the same one that's on the Gen 5 or Gen 4 uh, electronics. Um, the next version of this board, which I'm going to put up on Thingiverse very soon, um, you can use either solder the chip on directly or you can use the Adafruit board that they just came out with. And you can solder all of the important components of the Arduino directly onto the board or put headers on and use a mini. So depending on whether you feel like soldering it directly um, and have a slimmer board or if you want to put headers on and um, just get it done faster but a little more expensive. And then reset to control the LCD. Okay, so this is the default mode where it's showing, just showing you raw temperatures. This is showing the extruder and its set temperature. And then this is the build platform and its set temperature. So if I set the build platform to, let's say, 110, and then you heard the clicker, the clicker clacker kick on. And so it'll show the build platform start to heat up. This is coming from the um, this is coming from the uh, thermistor. This is coming from the thermocouple on board, but it's actually getting the number that you see back from the extruder controller, so that you know what the extruder controller is reading. Um, the firmware on the extruder controller is modified to support this. Um, if it doesn't find this board in place when it boots up, it will try to use a thermocouple, and so. If you plug this board in later, it'll still show whatever temperature it's using. So if you don't, if you decide to stick with a thermocouple and just use, or stick with a thermistor and use the thermocouple for calibrating, it has a separate mode for that. And here it's showing the ohms of the extruder as the extruder controller is reading it from a thermistor. This nine is just an error code because there actually isn't a thermocouple even attached to the thermistor or to the um, there isn't a thermistor actually connected to the extruder controller right now. Um, so these are the same temperatures that it shows. This is what the um, this is what the extruder controller is reading. This is what the set temperature is, and then this is what the thermocouple internally is reading. So using this and the um, the widgets for, on the wiki. That's fun. Widgets from the wiki then you can actually uh, use this to calibrate and get your beta. Um, a further version of this, if I decide to pursue that, I could actually you could just hit a button, tell it to use that temperature as your set temperature, hit another hit the button again later after you set it, and it'll give you your beta. But it's easy enough to get the beta as it is now, and this gives you all the numbers that you need without having to plug into the board funny and all kinds of crap like that. And then if you want to calibrate the build platform, you have all the same numbers. I'm not sure why it's not reading the actual ohms there, though. It should. Oh, a debug mode. Sorry. But, and then show raw temperatures back. And that's the... Uh, running over Bluetooth. Thank you, SparkFun. Um, a regular Make 5, um, with the exception of using the thermocouple instead of the uh, thermistor. Um, and then here you see the triple axis Palulu driver, also about to go on Thingiverse, um, hopefully this weekend. Um, this version I goofed up on the spacing of the mechanical end stop connections.
but this uses the same in-stop connections as the Gen 4 electronics, except for I use a horizontal connection instead of a vertical connection. Um, the vertical connections should work fine, um, but this is made to be a drop-in on a cupcake. Um, so power connection, your three steppers, and then your three stepper connectors from your motherboard, and then you drop in your Palulu boards, and there you go. 16th step um, stepper control, much quieter. Um, I've laughed all, uh, cranked it up to where I can't move the build platform at all by hand um, without jumping a belt, and the steppers don't get, don't even get warm. They barely feel like they're getting above room temperature. Let me speed it up so that it'll get louder. Oh, mm, anyway. Speed it up so it'll get louder. This is really quiet. Z is still a little loud. But that's all up here. That's the top of the bot reverberating stuff. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on there. But it's still a tenth as loud as it was. Slow it down so it goes nice and you can hear each step. I have a jar a little ways. I might hit the end. That was the loudest one. That's the loudest one by far. I can barely even hear it. So she's going through his test sequence right now. And when the red comes on, the white lights come on. You can see how they're connected. These ones I was experimenting with a printed uh, attacher, and it didn't really work so well because it hit the Z on the, on the Z platform. So I have three RGBs and then four whites, and it's just held on with clear packing tape right now. Um, at some point, I'll actually drill little gaps, little divots into the side of the acrylic and permanently attach them. But the clear acrylic, uh, the clear packing tape works really nicely right now. And so there's there's three RGB LEDs, but there's actually a fourth one up here on the on the MiG-5, lighting it up nicely. <laughs> and their surface mount. And then I have blue LEDs down here. And each of those are, um, that's uh, five different strings of LEDs. Um, one for the red, one for the green, one for the blue, one for the white one, and then another one for this blue down here. Um, the circuit I'm using, the chip I'm using, has room for 16 strings. Um, so I'm going to put another red, green, and blue, white on the, or would that be the white, plot, white build? Um, so that this here will actually glow to tell you the um, build platform temperature. Right now it's going through a rainbow sequence, just a demo sequence, but um, when I get the code all merged in, then this will actually show your temperature of your um, extruder. Um, it'll start out at something like blue, work its way up through yellow, orange, to red. Red meaning a uh, temperature where you can actually get burnt. And then it'll slowly work its way up to white with the help of the white LEDs when you're at set temperature. And this is the same, controlled by the same board um, as my temperature controller. Um, like I said, this is different firmware. I haven't merged the two firmwares right now. So right now, this is not controlling the LCD at all, so that's why it's showing nothing but blanks. Um, it's just using ITC to control the... Um, 
the, uh, I believe it's a TLC 59116 board, which I have, and I'll show separately in a second. All right, so this is controlled by the temperature controller, and it just connects into the I2C off of the Arduino Mini Pro. Yeah. Um, I believe in a regular Arduino Mini would work. And so it's just an I2C connection. The next version of this board, which I haven't etched yet, actually has all four pins so that um, it can carry. Um, power, but right now it's getting its power straight from the motherboard with this connection that I etched and shaped into the actually shaped into the shape of the circuit board so that you don't have to have an external connector. And so there you can see the uh, um, Texas Instruments. Um, yeah, it's a, I believe it's TLC 59116. I2C controlled. Um, it's a it's a really nice chip. It's uh, I2C and it has uh, um, constant current. So you set what current you want for all of your outputs, and it uh, will make sure that it has that. I'm running the LEDs in parallel, so I run three or four of them, and I tell it to run uh, 80 milliamps. And that's enough to run four LEDs safely um, of most colors. And then a uh, bunch of screw terminals. Get this the right direction. Where did that go? There we go. And so two power connectors, two ground connectors, and uh, then your 16 different channels of LCD or LED. And then here's a little case that I printed up. So mount it to the MakerBot, and I just use this the, the standard screw here with M4, M6, M4, and a little chunk of wire, and it mounts on there nice and firmly, and then just has a nice little groove to slide into and snap into place. Give it power. A few weeks ago, we went to the auto place and it smelled like I can't even describe it. There we go. Something hit accidentally. Rolling. Okay, so this is my variation on the MakerBot uh, spool holder. Uh, it's got a tray that goes on top of the MakerBot system. And one of the improvements is the design for loading the spool. So you can just have a single uh, M5 screw that holds it in the center. You throw on your flap. Um, this doesn't have the quick connect hooked up, so you can't uh, use it right now. But you're going to feed it through. You put your spool top back on. Uh, put back in the N5. Put the top back on. And then you can set your bot right on top. The bot locks into place. It's got some slots for screws on the side. And there's sufficient space in the back to uh, load the uh, uh, filament from the spool. And then it's also keyed on the bottom, so these fit nested nice together. Um, I've got a wood one here that uh, I'll have to unload the filament. Get this to work. But I got a wood version uh, that I can pop on here to lock into place. This may or may not work with that too. So, uh, yeah, I think you had But, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> so, can I put it on there backwards? No. Uh, oh, no, that's no, cool. no, that's key.
but sit down theoretically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Perfect. Yep. So they lock together nicely. So you can